All right, there. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Let's jump right to it. I am super duper excited because for the last year, I have been doing research on this new uh, trend in gig economy, which was accelerated because of the pandemic. So we all know that a couple of years ago, three years ago, we were all just about to go into these, well, no, we were into the lockdowns and um, millions of people lost their jobs. Millions of people had to go home and, and begin working. And so as a result, um, uh, there, were an, there was an emergence of creative thing, creative ways to make money because once we started coming out of the pandemic, and some will say we're still not out of it, but as we began again to got, get back to normal life uh, or the new normal, uh, a couple of things happened. One, people did not want to go back to their traditional jobs. They did not want to go back to the offices, right? So that was, um, that kind of fueled the gig economy. The second thing was that when people came out of the um, pandemic, there was a lot of financial responsibility. All those things that supported you, your, your, uh, uh, the, the, what was that check? Um, everybody got that two thousand uh, that yeah. two thousand dollar check, but I can't remember what it was called. Uh, stimulus. Well, check. The, the government check, you say it. Yes, the government <laughs> check. Thank you, Jamil. So everybody, you had the government check. You had a moratorium on evictions. You, you know, they couldn't turn off your utilities, but those meters were running. And and when you came out, it was like, and those things got cut off. And many people still have not gone back to work because I know that they talk about how good the, the workforce is and and uh, what the labor market is saying and all that type of stuff. But the reality is after so you've been out of the market for so long, they drop you off the list so they don't even count you. So those numbers are, um, they're amazing. But what's happening with the gig economy is that people got really creative. And uh, let me just pull up, I do have a, a little PowerPoint so that you can follow along and not just look at me. So I'm going to pull that up. I'm going to share my screen and pull that up. And plus that will kind of help me stay on point because I, I have ADD when it comes to this type of thing. And I'll just start really sharing a lot of things. So um, this is this will just kind of help me uh, go where I need to go and I'll pull up the next one. So um, so basically what, what I'm giving you now is the introduction. I'm going to talk to you today about the gigs. We're going to talk a little bit about podcasting because there are so many people that have a voice and really want to put something together and get their voices heard. What I see a lot on Facebook, what I see a lot on YouTube is some very talented people who will put their information out there or they'll turn their cameras on and they'll do what they want to do. But a lot of times they don't know that they should be getting paid or that they can get paid, or they don't know the strategies for getting paid, or they don't know how to put it together and package it the way that they want. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. And then finally, the last thing that we're going to talk about that I want to make sure that everybody is abreast of is that there was a lawsuit settlement with Facebook and so there is a process and a step for you claiming your funds if you were on Facebook between the uh, 2007 and 2022 because your information was shared without your knowledge to a company called Analytica. And Analytica did a lot of things with your information um, that just kind of created a lot of ruckus in the world today. So. But let's get back to the gig. Um, you know, gigs are not new. We've all heard of gigs. Um, maybe it's been, you know, if you were a musician, you were going to go out and get a gig. If you were a speaker, you go out and get a gig. So gigs were just kind of something that not everybody did. Everybody else had jobs. But there were those people who were talented and either outside of their job, they gigged or, or they or they gigged, but that was just their side hustle and we hope they did well. 
Uh, one of the things that we'll refer to, uh, you'll hear me refer to is millennial money. And so the money that people are making from the gig economy, we call that millennial money because the folks that really had the gig concept down was the millennials. I mean, we five years ago when they were telling us to decentralize everything and you know, we we were telling them, look, this is how life is. This is what you need to do. You need structure, get a good job, go to school, do this, 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 and this. And they were always seeing freedom and flexibility and creativity. And so they did not want to necessarily just lock themselves down into jobs and stuff like that. So they had this, this vision even before the pandemic, and they were starting to do that kind of thing. But because of the pandemic, now we're talking about revolutionary platform that really has unlocked the, uh, the world of opportunities for so many people. How many people, well, I'm not gonna throw that out there. I'll just tell you guys, 50% half of the workforce is currently working gigs in addition to their jobs or either working gigs full time, okay? That's 89 million people. So if you're not gigging, if you don't have a gig or if you're not gigging, you're not a part of that. But what's happening is these folks are gigging and um, as they are uh, working, over 19 million of them are adding 1,500 or more to their household income, okay? Um, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to show you some things, my own stuff, because like I said, I've been researching this for the last year, and I want you to see that while we're talking about making more than $1,500, um, more than $1,500 a month, the reality is, is there anybody in here who's ever driven or delivered for any of the delivery companies like Uber, DoorDash, or or Grubhub? Yes, I have. Okay. Brittany, how did you do? Yes, Tell I me, have. What was your average uh, day pay? So, um, some weekly. days, I, okay, so, like, well, I did Lyft, but I also did Instacart. Um, so, with Lyft, um, I could make, so I used to work at the postal service, so I could make my check within my two week period check within four days. So I can make that 800 or that $1,200 within four, three to four days. Okay. A okay. week. Yeah, if that's, exactly. if I chose to do more days, I could, you know, but within them three to four days, I was making the check within two weeks. Okay. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, okay. Hello, yeah, me, Divine Heart. Oh. My name is actually Devon, but I spell it Divine. But oh, Devon, uh, okay. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> so, how did you do? Tell so, me, what did you make? Um, let's see. I used uh, DoorDash a lot was my favorite one, and Rody. I don't know if anybody's ever heard of that one. Um, but my goal was basically a hundred dollars a day, and a lot of days I could reach that goal in less than eight hours. But that was I wanted to make seven hundred a week, basically. So. My goal was 100 a day, but there are plenty of days where I could easily pull almost $200 a day, um, especially if I was doing roadies, because I could get 100 alone just from those and make that in maybe like four hours, and then I would uh, go and do food delivery in the evening. Um, so yeah, I was making anywhere from 100 to $200 a day. Okay. And then okay. my car broke down. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So... You know, um, I like to piggyback off of her as well. Like I had a goal a day as well, like the hundred fifty, two hundred dollars a day as well. So that's how okay. I made the money quick. <laughs> so yes, <yeah>, she's right. <laughs> Wonderful. I'm gonna pull up some pictures here. Um, I want you to kind of see a couple of things. I don't know if that's what I want to pull up, but I'm gonna pull it up here and see if I got it. Um it might have been, oh, I think I have it. I know where it is. Okay. Um, so I'm going to show you guys a couple of things because you're right on point. Okay. Um, if you are working your traditional job and you're making, let's say you're bringing home $600 a week. So every two weeks, you're bringing home a total of $1,200. Um, 
delivering um, as a gig using your car, your car can do uh, that type of money in a matter of um, days. And that's pretty consistent. I'm sorry that this is, I thought that uh, this was up. Let me see. Um, I don't know why this is not, I must be in a different, uh, and I'm really doing this on the wrong thing. I'm not doing, that's not where I want to go. I want to go right here. This is what I'm trying to do. Okay, now, so um, let's go ahead and take a look at, uh, I'm going to go to my photos, because what I did was I took, um, um, photos of what I was doing. So I've driven DoorDash, Uber Eats, and Grubhub. I've driven Roadie. And how many of you are familiar with Spark? Have you ever heard of Spark? Yes, that's the Walmart and Sam's Club. Yes. Anybody delivering for Spark? I signed up for them, but I never, I never actually worked with them. Okay, okay, you will after today because when I show you this, you're gonna stop delivering for everybody else. Um, I also oh, deliver- I've heard good things about Spark. <laughs> What'd you say? I have heard good things about them. Okay, yeah, it, it is some good things. So I want to just show you, I'm gonna go down here and see if I can just ignore all those other big pictures and stuff like that. In fact, I'm looking wild right there. I'm going to stop sharing so I can pull up what I want to pull up. <laughs> um, so um, I've been delivering, like I said, over the last year. Spark has been my latest, um, uh, the latest one that I started delivering, Spark, and another one called Delivered, okay? Is anyone familiar with Delivered? Okay. I've heard of it, but I've never used it. Never used it. Okay, well, I just want to, let me get past here. Okay. Okay, so there's a roadie order right there. So for those of you who um, are familiar with roadie, roadie, this is a, roadie delivers for like Best Buy, Home Depot, Advanced Auto Parts. It could be large items. Um, if you, you can do really well with roadie if you have a, a truck, a van or an SUV, because a lot of times you'll be delivering some relatively big things. So um, Rody, uh will pop up their orders. They'll tell you where it is and how much time you should be um, taking to um, complete that order. So uh, Rody's a, um, a good company. So let me go ahead. I'm going to... Uh, I want to get to the spark ones and then I'm going to get back to just really getting into gig work and all the different things because there is something for everybody. When I say something for everybody, because there is somebody that's probably sitting in here or watching and saying, I want to drive. I don't like to drive. I'm not going to drive. And that's fine because driving is just like only one of so many things. So let me go ahead and here. So this is Spark. As you can see, I want you to look at those numbers. For those of you who deliver for DoorDash, Uber Eats, and Grubhub, you know how they'll pop up one order at one time, and you've got a few seconds or about a minute to accept it. And if you don't accept it, then it's gone, and you have to wait until another order comes up. So this is the Spark screen. And when I first got the screen, I was like, okay, what is that? And not only do they show you multiple orders that you can choose, they show you what's in the order and where it's going and how many items and if there's a heavy item or whatever. And then after that, you get a chance to either accept the order or reject the order. As you can see, the numbers are $36, $53, $18, okay? So the average order is between about $30 and $40. That's pretty consistent. And um, the smaller orders, like the $25 order, um, that's two, that's two drop-offs. 
The $36 order at the top is four drop-offs. If you can look at the top, you'll see the time up here at, in the left-hand corner says 506. And they're saying that the drop-offs will be at 603. So you're looking at making $36 in one hour. The most that I've ever made, there you see there's a $50 order there, $30, $25 order. Um, the largest order that I have um, taken or uh, delivered was a 60, um, $66 order. So that was, uh, that was pretty good. And um, so anyway, so driving, for those of you who are driving or for those of you who have never driven, then when we talk about people adding a $1,500 to their paycheck every, um, every month, as you can see, the drivers are adding $4,000 a month to their income. The drivers are doing $6,000 a month. And if you're really, really, um, if you're really, really ambitious, you can make eight to $9,000 a month. I'm not going to be out there eight hours. And because of delivered and because of um, Spark, I, I usually do about six hours a day. And I'm at $200 or 250 consistently every day that I drive. So the only time that I'm not at $200 by three o'clock is because I came in the house and decided, eh, I'll pick that up tomorrow. I'm good today. Pretty cool, huh? For not having bosses and all that kind of stuff. So, and are you 1099 for that? Or are you, you are 1099, so you have to do um, you have to do the 1099 stuff. That means that you need to, one, the cool thing about how some of them pay, they'll give you your own credit card or to receive your, your pay. So if the credit, if they're paying to that credit card and you just keep your money in a separate account or on that, like in that credit card account or debit card account, I'm sorry. If you keep your money there, then you're good to go because you have a record of what you're paying. You're going to always have a record of it but you can always start setting aside um, money for being able to pay your taxes. But you know what you can do? You can write off all those gas, all that gas that you're paying for. You can write off all that mileage. You can write off uh, repairs. It is so many things. That car now is work, not just making money for you from the standpoint of driving it, but it's making money for you from the standpoint of tax credits. Okay. So let's get back to this. So who benefits from um, the gig in economy? It is the employers and it is the workers. The employers are moving rapidly to gig workers because what they can do is they can say, I need a stock person today. And so there are apps um, like um, Instawork and um, GigWise and uh, Variable. Those um, those apps are apps that you can use if you're just a general labor person and you want to do some production work or you want to work in a stock room or you want to do some maintenance work. They're going to post the, app, the job and they pay you by the day and they tell you what the job is and how much it's going to pay and then you just submit for it and, if, and then they accept you or if someone else got in before then, then, you know, okay. So the, let's go back to the gig economy again. So the gig economy started back in 2008 with Uber, okay? So we all know that gigs are not new, but the gig economy is new. And the gig economy is a one point, they, they, it, there's questions about it. Some are saying it's $1.5 trillion. Others are saying that it's $1.3 trillion. It doesn't make a difference. It's a lot of money that's flowing through the gig economy, okay? Dr. James, I'm going to talk to you about being a writer, okay? Because um, I know what you, some of the things that you have done, and it is so much more that um, you can do with your writing. Some of the types of gigs that you'll see commonly is podcasting, Drivers, affiliate marketing. Who's who's familiar with affiliate marketing in here? Okay, we'll talk about that. I am. Te okay, uh, teaching, selling, and retail. Um, the gig economy is the fastest growing 
um, segment of the workforce is fat is growing 15 times faster than any other segment in history. Again, I told you guys how many people are out there gigging right now. I call them gigsters. Um, so we know that it's an excellent way to make money. Let's look at what some of the gig categories are, okay? Freelancing writing. That's writing articles, blog posts, and other content. Now, you might say, I would love to do that, but I'm not really a good writer, okay? How many of you are familiar with AI technology or have heard on the news about things like chat PTG? I have. Uh -huh. Okay. So if you are a writer or you're interested in writing, I want somebody to throw out a subject, okay? Any subject. Who wants to give me a subject? And we're going to write an article if we going to get this working today. Okay, there we being go. Being a single mother. Okay, you want an article on being a single mother. Okay. We're going to write a, how about we write a 100 word article on being, or blog, or whatever you want to call it, on being a single mother. All right. I'm going to tell Chat PTG to write a 100 word article on being a single mother. Okay. And let's go ahead. Let's do this. Write a 100 word article. Sometimes I really hate technology. Let's go on into, uh, it wants, we need to go into this other browser. Chat PTG doesn't like um, Chrome, okay? <laughs> Write a 100 word article on being a single mother. All right, here we go. So can everybody see that? Can everybody see the screen? Yes. yes. Okay, wonderful. Do you see what it's doing? It's doing it for you. It's writing your article. So you might be thinking, well, if it's writing an article and I'm going to be doing blogging, how is it my work? Because you're going to take what it wrote and you're going to, uh, you're going to make it yours you're going to, because it's no different than research, okay? Um, and you can use chat PTG to research, okay, if you're writing an article. But the old-fashioned way of having, when you have writer's block, you can just go to chat PTG and you can read, a, you've got this 100-word paragraph. Being a single mother is a challenging role that requires resilience, strength, and determination. Single mothers often have a balance have to balance the responsibility of raising children alone with the demands of work and other com commitments. They may also face financial, emotional hardships and may feel overwhelmed by the weight of their responsibility. Is this cool or what? My goodness, that is so cool. So, Jamil, give me a, a, a topic. Give me a course for me to write a, um, um, a course description for. Is Jesus Christ real? Write a course description on whether or not Jesus Christ is real. Okay. You know me, I got to go. I, I have to, with my pastoral degree, I have to go that way. <laughs> <laughs> this is so good. Can you, I look never at this. knew this. Can you see this? It's writing a course description for you. Is this that, crazy? But uh, guess what? Is, Guess what this does? It allows you now to provide a writing service for other people. You know how people are like, I need letters written, or I need this written, or I need that written, and I'm not good, or I don't have. You could actually say, hey, I'll, I'll do your writing for you. What do you need? Wow. I need a course description. Okay. And then you go in here. Now, it's, got, it's about to get a little bit better, okay? Because I'm going to take this, right? And I'm going to copy it. And then I'm going to go to i'm just going to move this over here i'm going to go to another website called quillbot how many of you have ever heard of quillbot nope never heard of it okay 
I'm going to paste that in there and I'm gonna say, hey, Quillbot, I want you to give me this in, uh, let's see, give it, give it to me in formal writing. Okay, so it's gonna give it to you in formal writing. Well, actually, it's a little long. Can you shorten it? Give it to me in a shortened form. Wow. Okay, give it to me in a standard form. I actually also can change the um, the language as well. Yes, yes, yes. You see that? Give it to yeah. me in German. Is this free to use? Um, up to a certain point, Quillbot is free to use. Right. Okay, because I'm like I think I say. What about the chat? Uh, the free, free version. The free Pardon version. Me? Chat BTT is free. Quillbot is free, but you're limited to 250 uh, characters. Yeah. But the pricing on it, trust me, especially if you're going to be using it to make money, it's worth it. It's worth it. I, I, I have come to really start depending on uh, both Quillbot and Chat BTT, and there are others out there. Okay? So, Very good. so, now you know, if you're not a writer and, or if you're not good at writing or if you don't think you can make de de deadlines and stuff, there you go. You can do it, okay? So you can post on sites like peoplebythehour.com um, people, uh, or um, there's another free, major freelancing one. I'll get the name of it for you. There's a book that I should have emailed to all of you, and I think it's listed in there. Um, but anyway, those are places where you can write, um, do writing, or, or promote yourself as a writer, and people will hire you to write for them. Or you may know people because there are people all around that's always coming to me. Can you write this for me, or can you proofread this, or can you do this or that? Um, yeah, sure, I can now that I can do it in five minutes, okay? So then there's uh, um, graphic design, creating logos, websites, and other visual clients. Again, AI gener uh, generated um, stuff. So you can actually do these things that you think you can't do because Wix has an AI that's going to design the website for you. Um, uh, there's another one. I don't think it's GoDaddy that has an AI, but there's an... Um, there's one called design.ai. They do websites. They do logos. Almost everything that you're seeing lately that I'm putting out there, those things were designed using AI. My whole website was practically AI'd, okay? Uh, virtual assistant. So there are people who need you to provide administrative support to them. People are, are like, can you type? Can you uh, uh, book uh, appointments? Can you do those type of things? Virtual assistance is a big one. Tutoring and teaching, okay? So the pandemic, because a lot of folks are not did not send their kids back, they are in need of people who are either um, able to teach a course or they're looking for tutors because so many kids fell behind during the pandemic. So they need help with getting their kids back up to snuff. So there are um, very, there's a lot of tutoring and education sites. Also, for you educators or you people who have courses or you guys that want to train somebody in something, but you don't know how to put together a curriculum, AI, um, the website Kajabi has an AI that will do your lessons for you and the lessons, the script, uh, um, the lesson description or course description, the whole nine yards. So, and you can sell your courses on Kajabi. My website is gigafy.io and I have free mini courses on several of these topics. So I encourage you, if you want to either write it down now or you can even, while I'm talking, just go over to gigafy, G-I-G-I-F-Y.io and take a look underneath the tab that, that's Gig Academy you'll see the many courses are there and those courses are free. So um, if you want to learn more uh, in-depth information on these things, then 
head over there and start, you know, just kind of looking around at what's available to you on that site. So if you want to use your car, obviously we talked about right uh, delivery, food and products. I'm more of a de uh, product delivery person. Um, I told you delivered is the other um, service that I use or that I deliver for. That's a catering service. They cater typically at lunchtime and breakfast time. Their orders are never under $20 and never over 30 minutes to do. Okay. So on average, I get a $40 order and it's 15 minutes or less away. So uh, when you look at that, you start, the, you know, dividing your, uh, your hourly clock for pay in quarters. And you just made $40 in 15 minutes. Now you're averaging $160 an hour, okay? And so you can set your goal and decide what you want to make hourly and you will make it, okay? So uh, grocery shopping, someone talked about doing the grocery shopping gig. And did you know that you can wrap your car? There's a company that's called Wrap. And they will pay you to put their advertisement on your car. So when you're driving around, people are looking at their product. So if you've ever seen a car and you see the product, you're thinking that's a company car. It's not a company car. It's somebody who's being paid and have had their car wrapped. Kind of cool, huh? Then there's performance-based, okay? That's your YouTube, your narrating and voiceovers, your podcasting, and your OTT. Um... Let's go ahead and look at ACX, okay? This is um, this is where you go if you want to read an audible book for an author. It is super cool. So there I am. And let's go and we'll look at titles, accepting auditions. Okay, you can say, I want to make between $100 and $200 an hour reading, okay? So that's pretty cool, but I don't just want to read any book. I only want to read books that's related to art and entertainment and maybe biography and memoirs. So now I click on that. Let's see, James Scott has a book that he needs someone to read for. What is he offering? This book is going to take 14 hours to read, or it's 14 hours of reading. He's paying between $100 and $200 per hour. So you're either going to make $1,400 in these 14 hours, or you're going to make $2,800 in these 14 hours reading this book, okay? So now, I don't want you to think that you're going to sit down and just read straight for 14 hours. You're going to have a period of time for you over time that you can read this book. So you guys will work together. You'll collaborate with the author to decide when this book is going to be read, how it's going to be read, and the whole nine yards, what they want. Um, like with anything, whether it's driving, whether it is um, reading a book, whether it's whatever the gig is, you need to know the best techniques and the best tools. The worst thing you can do is get out there and say, Miss Kimberly said, I can go in here, read this book, and I'm going to make, you know, $1,400 an hour. And then you pull up your phone and you're reading in the phone and you're like, why won't anybody hire me? They're not going to hire you because if you listen to audible books, they sound like they've been done in studios, right? So there are some tools that you're going to need to invest just like, with driving, you have to invest in your car. With reading, you have to invest in the right type of microphone. You'll need to invest in maybe one of those, a pop um, uh, filter, uh, one of those little uh, shields that absorb the um, sound. And guess where they recommend that you, you're never going to believe this, they recommend that you go and you set up your closet where there's clothes to do your reading because that absorbs the sound. They don't want the echo. Like right now, if they, if the way that I'm sounding right now, my voice is echoing and bouncing off of walls and all this other type of stuff. So they don't want that sound. They want it to sound like it's in the studio. And so a lot of people will go, if their closet is big enough and they have enough clothes in it, then they'll actually go, like if you have a walk-in closet, they'll go in and they'll do it in their walk-in closet. 
Interesting, huh? Any question? What questions do you have for me so far? I'm just this is good. Wow. <laughs> wow, for the book, that's for sure. I, I like okay, to read. Okay, I haven't so even gotten to creating your own <laughs> low content book. We gonna talk about that. Hopefully, I might have to do a second one of these because I am talking fast because I do not want to uh, go over time. But I will stay here thirty minutes after and answer any questions or or go back and forth with anybody who wants to stay and talk. Okay. So on top television, OTT. So most people are like, I don't know what OTT is. So we'll just say Roku and Fire Stick. Okay. So we all know about. And maybe we don't all know about, but many of us know about having a YouTube channel and you're putting your content on and that whole nine yards. Did you know that you can have your own Hulu, your own um, sling, your own, um, what else is out there? YouTube TV, your own Pluto TV, your own Tubi. Did you know that? So you can actually no. <laughs> have your own a uh, platform or app for Fire Stick and Roku. And here's the cool thing. There, there are people who, uh, collections of, um, they have like a, a library that you can have access to. You have to pay for that. But you purchase all these movies or whatever genre, and then you have your list of, um, you know, your different channels. So this is the cooking channel and this is the whatever channel or whatever. You could actually do that. And it's really cool. So you have like regular programming. And did you know that, um, did you know that in addition to that, the advertisers, because you can go on some of these off-brand channels, if you want to call it that. And you'll be like, wow, McDonald's is advertising. Oh my gosh, GM is advertising. Wow, Target is off advertising. The advertisers actually pay you for running their ads on your channel. That's one way of making money with OTT. You also could rent out or lease out space for people to put their programming on. So if you got a channel, you got, what, 168 hours of programming um, each week? So how do you, what do you do with that, you know? you can sell that off and people can rent um, that space and put their programs and their um, blogs and their, you know, shows or whatever they want to do uh, on there. You can also do advertising. You can sell your own advertising to folks um, in your shows and stuff like that. So there's like a million ways to make money with OTT. I'm about to do that with uh, my partner and we are so excited because we've got our first folks. We're actually handpicking the different talents and their type of programming to put on this OTT network. And we're excited about that. Okay. And then of course, podcasting. Anybody on the, in the group want to be a podcaster? Yes, me. <laughs> okay. We got, as well. Okay. We've got two people who want to podcast. Anybody else trying to do a podcast? So there's two guys that I am. Okay. And so I like the your, your buddy back in the background wants to too. He's like, I want to do a podcast. So with podcasting, you can do a video podcast or you can do an audio podcast. Okay. Um, podcasting. Um, people are making money from podcasts. They're making uh, anywhere from on average a zero dollars to five hundred dollars per episode. Okay. So once again. Um, there's a method to that madness. Who, why are, why are there people making zero and why are there people making $500? I'm going to be doing a full, uh, training for podcasting so that I can really break all of that down to you. But it just comes down to, um, in my other life, I actually was an advertising executive in radio. And so I understand how to structure your clock and plug in those ads during your episodes and then you can generate money that way. You can uh, you can actually be subscription based. You can um, um, you can it's 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 a lot of ways. <laughs> so <laughs> it's just a lot of ways to make money with podcasting. But you really want to be somewhere around making a thousand to two thousand dollars 
a an episode. And if you just do drop an episode once a week, then that's like $4,000. If you're doing it daily, that's a horse of another color. So um, you want to be out there on Apple, um, Spotify, um, tune in, and getting on those um, platforms are not difficult at all, okay? All you need to have is the product. Sharing and renting, okay, Airbnb, renting out your house. I'm actually going to uh, start renting my um, home for people who need a place to do their podcast or need a background, need a fireplace, need a, you know, whatever. So I'm going to be doing that. But you can rent your home out for things like that. You can rent your home out uh, for Airbnb. Um, storage space, that's huge. Um, a lot of people are renting out their garage and, and parking your car on the street and just basically renting the garage out and allowing people to store things there. You're not going to be like a the the big store places where you got 25 or 100 people all storing things, but you might have three or four people that you feel you know comfortable with and being able to store your stuff their stuff in your garage or in your basement or in your uh, in a, a room in your house. You set the rules for how and when or how much of a uh, notice you need in order to open up so that they can get what they need to get. And of course, with all of these new things out here, all the insurance companies and stuff are really coming together and working quickly to put things in place to protect you and to protect them, okay? And speaking of protection, people are renting their cars. Did you know that? How many of you are familiar with Toro or Hire? Hire car. I am. My friend, okay. she does it, her and her husband. <laughs> yes, it's pretty cool. Yeah. It's like your car is totally paid for yourself. So if you have two cars, you might want to rent one out. And people are having a lot of good success with that. In fact, there's one guy who started out with one car and he made so much money from renting his car out that he bought two more cars. So he's just basically creating his own um fleet and you establish your relationships with the drivers and the whole nine yards and it's much more inexpensive to rent that way than it is to go to your hertz and things like that so as that market grows it looked like hertz and enterprise and all those guys are either going to have to become very competitive with it or they're going to be in trouble like taxi cabs and uber right and then what about your tools and equipment you might have a piano or a keyboard that you can rent out. You might have a power drill that you can rent out. You may have a lawnmower that you can rent out. There's a website um, called Renta, R-E-N-T-A-H. And when I say they rent anything and everything, oh, you need some pots, to, uh, some pans to bake a cake in, I'll rent them to you. <laughs> So now if you use, if people are using to, uh, apps like Renta, it's like, well, I'm not going to purchase a, um, a kitchen a mixer. I'll just go on and rent one and then I can give, give it back. And now I don't have my kitchen all cluttered up with a whole lot of stuff. So that's something else that you can do. Uh, user testing, focus group surveys and web and product audit. Okay. So there's a site called um, Trimata. I get a email from them almost every day asking me to go to the web a website that they assigned and look at it. You put the recorder on that they set up and they can't see you or anything. They only are recording the screen as you're talking about it. And they want you to answer their questions so that they can find out if this website is functional. So they're asking the questions you and, you're, and you're answering the questions. They pay you $10 for each one that you do. In two months, I've got 179 of those requests to do. So each one of those, when you add that up, that's $1,700. You divide that by two. That's almost a, that's a little over $800 a month just spending 10 minutes either looking at a website or looking at an app because you put it on your phone as well and you are actually looking at that so that's um one of those things that at night when you're winding down you might be able to do then you have your focus group yes how is trimata spelled uh t-r-y-m-a-t-a 
and actually let me see if I can change this. I just want to um, show you as I go a couple of, of these um, a couple of these sites. Let's see if I can do one of these. Okay. The next one I'm going to talk about is user interviews. Okay. I'm pulling up the site now. So this is called user interviews. Okay. And I want you to see what they have on there. Have you ever participated in an energy rewards program? Tell us about it. It's going to take 20 minutes. We're going to pay you $20. Zoom interview on health and wellness. We're looking for feedback on a product we are building. This is going to take an hour and 30 minutes for $100, okay? Uh, they're looking for experienced mobile gamers wanted. Um, they're going to give you $100 for two, two hours. So that's $50 an hour. They want you to take a look at these mobile games that they're developing in a Zoom session and tell them what you think, okay? Is this pretty cool or what? It's so, so cool. As you can see. <laughs> I mean, when I say that that there's something for everybody, if you came in and said, you know, you know how back in the day you do a uh, you do a um, uh, trying to see what just went up here, okay. So back in the day, you know, if, if we talked about a job, we talked about a specific job, you know, and now we can talk about, you know, all kinds of things. Okay. Then there's surveys and completing. Has anybody heard that commercial that said, um, uh, go to this website, 750.com and you'll get $750. So if you heard that ad, you probably said, okay, that's, that sounds scammy. So, but why are they advertising openly on the radio? Because you will get $750. In fact, you'll get up to a thousand dollars. Now it's not going to be as simple as just going to the website and getting it. But once you get there, what they want you to do is they want you to try products like certain little phone games. And then once you get to a certain level on that game, like they say, get to the third level and then we'll move you up. And on each level that you go to, you, you can get the money on that level. So it's not just you get 750 or a thousand each level. You start out, you can stop at a hundred dollars and take your hundred dollars. You can stop at 250 and take your $250. You can stop at 500. So, or you can go all the way to a thousand, but with each one of those, they want you to, do trials of different uh, websites like Pandora or um, up, Upscale or all those type of things. Now, here's the thing that you have to do. If you're going to do that, you need to keep a really impeccable record of um, what, what tools or what websites you've done a trial for. Because if it's a three-day trial, a seven-day trial or whatever, and you put your debit card on there... <laughs> You do not want to forget. You want to cancel it after you get your credit and you get your money. So, uh, but they bank on, hopefully, one, people will find things that they'll actually want to keep, or two, they'll forget and will at least get that first month before they cancel, okay? One of my other favorite ones is called Field Audit, and that's where you go into stores. That's an app on your phone. And, and I'm going to, I'm recording this. So all of the things that I'm telling you about, I'm going to make sure I email them to you. Um, field audit, you just go to the store. They tell you what the product is and you take a picture of it, upload it, and they pay you $5. It may be four or five products in that store that they want you to do that for. So before you get to the car, the money's already in your bank. Other things, you can be a dog walker or a sitter. That's really, really big right now. Uh, general labor apps where you, like, I don't want to drive. I don't want to use the computer. I just want to go to work and have a good day's work. Uh, personal chef or cook, cook. I just found one last night where you can actually uh, create experiences. If you like to cook, 
you can actually create experiences and invite people to come to your home and and serve them. And um, you can do small parties like of one or two. You can do bigger parties or you can maybe get a dining room like in your clubhouse or something like that if you're in an apartment. And you put, it's sort of like, um, um, it's so, sort of like uh, social.com. Um, I think it was called social dot com or Groupon. It's sort of like Groupon. You're yeah. going to put your experience up, the amount of it, and people book it, and then uh, you submit the, you send them the information, and they come and you feed them. And so basically, you just go through a short uh, acceptance process, and if they like you and want you, then you're on their roster. Questions to Dr. Bell? Yeah. Pardon me. <clears throat> Hello. Okay. Selling uh, retail, I'm talking fast again. <laughs> Drop shipping, um, selling, reselling, and affiliate marketing. These are like four of my favorite. I'm a paparazzi um, consultant. Has anyone ever heard of paparazzi? Yes. Okay, I love it because paparazzi, it's like, um, it's, it's like, first of all, it, everything is $5. So you're probably thinking, well, it's got to be made out of plastic and tin. It's made out of the exact same thing that the stuff on uh, at Kohl's or Macy's or those places are. So basically, they just cut out everybody except you. And so there are women who are actually making like $5,000 a week, $2,000 a week, because you don't have to sell paparazzi. When women see it, they just be like, Oh, yeah, I want that. That's pretty. I want that. I want that because it's $5 and no woman ever buys just one piece of jewelry. So my first show was about an hour. Um, I made $250. I got $500 in orders. It was really cool just in that hour and a half. So the biggest problem that I have with paparazzi jewelry is that I, I want to keep it. So <laughs> you got to sell it if you're going to make money with it. But there's Etsy, there's Facebook Marketplace. There are so many creative things to do. And like I said, as we develop the website and as we have more of these sessions, we're going to be focusing in on just one of them, okay? One at a time, I should say. Drop shipping. I do want to show you this one because I want you to see what you can do. You know how you have, um, you know how you have, uh, um, family reunions and things like that. And so you go to order uh, T-shirts and you're trying to track down everybody and all that type of stuff. Well, Printify is very different because it, it cuts all of that out, okay? So you can go on Printify and I just want you to see, see my store here. Or you can see my products. Let me see. Here we go. So I just create designs and on um, stuff, and then I price them. And then what happens, like for my family uh, reunion, what I want to do is I want to use this to raise money. So there's a little sweatshirt that we've created. But I, I never have to touch this. I never have to uh, deliver anything. I never have to collect any money. So you can actually create your own family store, your own uh, a, a club store, your own church store, your own whatever. And uh, people will go online. As you can see, there's a book bag here, or backpack, walking in faith, okay? So and all of these, percentage do they take to yourself? You know, here, let me show you real quickly. So let's say you're going to do a t-shirt. So they tell you right now that this t-shirt is $9.38 for them. Okay. And if you if you um are a member of the site, that goes down by another two dollars or something like that. So you create the shirt, and then let's say you sell this shirt for $20, okay, for $19, your profit is going to be $10. Theirs is whatever the base price is. So what goes in your bank account is the amount that they um, 
the 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 amount that you added on to what the base price is. But what's cool about it is you don't have to pay that nine thirty eight. You just pay, you know, what's um. I can't go without talking about affiliate marketing. I almost missed it, but you don't have to. You don't have to pay that nine dollars. You just get your profit when somebody purchase it using the link that you just sent them. Okay? Now, do so, you? Does that link okay. only is a personal link, or that link can be included in Amazon and such and so on? That link is specific. You can you can actually you can sell your stuff on uh, stores with that one, but there are other uh, drop shipping sites. But with that one, you can share uh, sell on Walmart uh, network. You can sell, I think, on Amazon. You can sell on Etsy. You can sell on Shopify. So whatever your per your selling platform is, you can have multiple platforms. Got it. Thank you. All right. Now all those old clothes that you're about to donate, if you want, you there are websites that will actually take those um, from you and pay you money, and then they'll resell it, um, or you can sell it on consignment through these websites. But affiliate marketing, that's one that. I really love, and I would um, I would encourage everybody if you are in the room, and you go to Amazon Associates. Anyone um, familiar with Amazon Associates? I am. Okay. All right. So, go to Amazon Associates and sign up. Okay. Because all that does is, you know how you go on Amazon and you buy something and you love it like there's a foodie behind me. And when I first bought it, I was like, oh, this is great. I was the first one in the family to have uh, a, um, a foodie. And I loved it so much. I told my sister about it. She bought one. Told my other sister. She bought one. Another family member bought one. My other sister bought two for her two daughters. And the whole nine yards. Now, if I, and I think I bought my foodie off of Amazon. Now, if I had been an affiliate at that time, I just would have given them the link using, there's there's a link that you use, okay? And when you send that out, right here, there's my link. So let's say I want to encourage, I want people to buy this light, this key light right here. So what I do is I just go over here where it says text and I send them this link. I could do it as a link or I could do it as a full link or I could do it with the photo in it, but I did take this out and I come over here, back over here to Zoom and I put it in the box and I say, okay, everybody, you know, here's the lamp, here's the light that you need to buy, okay? So now everybody goes and they buy the lamp using that link and Amazon is paying me, okay? Now there are some affiliate programs that are huge. Am, uh, eBay pays 75% of what they what's purchased using their affiliate program. And all affiliate programs are not selling like this. Some affiliate programs are just like, you know, uh, for instance, Kajabi has an affiliate program. So if you're planning on building your website and I say, oh, you, well, yeah, uh, you're, you're, you can just go ahead and use, build your website on Kajabi. Almost all these sites, Wix, everybody got affiliate programs. So it tells you about the affiliate program and how much you're going to get paid. It's nothing more than a referral program. Um, it's just tons of them. Envato, that's a tool that I use um, to uh, to get uh, stock photos and stuff like that. And um, I'm an affiliate of it. So if somebody's doing graphic artwork or, I mean, graphics or websites or videos or whatever, then I'm going to tell you, well, you need to go to Envato when I'm going to send you a link and it's my affiliate link, okay? And a lot of people who are podcasting and blogging, <clears throat> That's what they do. They tell you about products. They put the link in there and tell you, if you click that link, you're going to get 20% off today. So people click on it and they're making passive income. 
because if you pass it on, then, you know, it, it's great. Even this website that I'm on with this, um, I'm an affiliate of this website that I have this PowerPoint on, okay? So I share with you a lot of information and um, we're a little bit over. So anyone who has to leave can go, but let me, um, uh, let me just, uh, um, let me just touch on a couple of things. And that is, um, if you are trying to get, and I shared a lot of information and this is recorded. So I will send anybody who wants the recording, email me. In fact, I'll probably put it up on YouTube. So um, I shared a lot of information, but that the key is now to think about what you wanna do, what you wanna make, what you want to, what you're interested in. I use formulas. I use combinations of things. If you want to make, let's say, $7,500 a month, you can say, okay, I'm going to make this much of it driving. I'm going to make this much of it doing affiliate marketing. I'm going to make this much of it doing my podcast. I'm going to do this much of it uh, renting out space. I'm going to do this much of it. Do any, you can do any type of combination of it. You make up your mind what you want to generate every month. And then you decide how you're going to do it, what that formula is going to be. For instance, if you're working a full-time job, then you can uh, register with Spark. Their peak time for Sam's Club is 7 in the morning, 7 and 8 in the morning. So you wake up one hour earlier than you usually wake up and leave the house one hour earlier so that you have enough time to do a spark order. You might get be able to do one or two spark orders that morning. So that might be less, let's say they're $30. So you might start your day with $60. At lunchtime, you might run a delivered order or a Uber Eats order or two or three. So at lunchtime, you might, you're going out to get food anyway. So pick up food and deliver it to somebody in that hour. So you might make another $25 there. Now you're at $85 and on your way home, that's when it's peak time for uh, Sam's Club and Comcast. So you do a $40 order there, that's $120. You do that for uh, 10 days, that's $1,200 that you just added without quitting your job. <laughs> you're still working, but now you're doing that. If you're on a second shift, you can do your deliveries and stuff all morning long. Um, uh, and then you add Saturday and Sundays on there. I mean, it's just amazing what you can do, right? So, uh, any question? What questions do you have for me? I know you guys are thinking. I, I think, uh, Kim, thank you so much for the invitation. I think there was great. There was a lot of information that I personally, um, learned, uh, never heard of it. Uh, you know, you see it and you hear about the gi, but you don't know the gi work, but you don't know exactly all of it that is in it. So I know that for me, if you can share with me the um, the recording, that would be great because this is something really good as I think about my own personal life, um, you know, how to make, you know, you always want to make a little bit extra money for whatever the reason may be. <clears throat> but I think looking at my wife and the things that she's doing, Maybe this is something that she may be interested as well to do. And you gave me a lot of information. So I appreciate that. Oh, not a problem. Not a problem. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this real easy for everybody. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to upload the video on YouTube. And then I'm going to send the link out to you guys. But I want you all to go to YouTube anyway. And um, I'm going to put it in the chat box. If you will go to YouTube and... Uh, just check out the videos because I'm putting, I'm trying to put more and more videos up more quickly on all of this information um, um, so that you can, um, so that you can learn as much as you can um, and get started in different areas. But I'm going to go ahead and give you my YouTube channel. Please subscribe to it because that will help me. Um, and it will help me to, um, let's see, here we go. 
Oh, where is it? There's the chat box. Okay, here we go. So I just put the channel in the chat box. Please click it on and subscribe to it. Um, because um, with the YouTube, YouTube, a lot of people are putting stuff on Facebook and Instagram, but it's YouTube that pays. So you want to uh, get in YouTube's uh, program so that they are paying you and it's not really that hard to do. Um, your podcasting, um, there's just a few things that you're gonna need for podcasting. You're gonna need the right microphone, the right camera, the right lighting, your content, a distribution. You can start this, you can start with putting your podcast on YouTube. I'm going to do a full course on um, podcasting because that in and of itself is um, is important. But before I lose anybody else, I need to go here. I do have a how to fill out this form. We have work to help you put money in your pocket. I have a um, um, the form for claiming always kept the finger up. Um, here of the Facebook lawsuit. So, um, Facebook lawsuit. I'm going to put this link in. I'm going to put this link in your um, in the chat box as well. And then it's also on YouTube. Um, but I want to make sure that you have this settlement claim form. That's what I'm looking for. Um, it's not that one. All right, I'm going to go ahead and just grab this. You know what? I'm going to just give you actually the article. Let me give you the article. And then you guys click it on. Because the form is in there and the article tells you more about that. But again, uh, in 2018, uh, there was a lawsuit brought against uh, Facebook. And uh, the lawsuit, was, the settlement was $725 million. And so what happened was they shared all of our information. Uh, I'm pretty certain that everybody, unless you're not on Facebook, every one of you probably was on Facebook between 2007 when they started and 2022. And so um, it is a class action suit, and that's why you have to uh, go ahead and submit your claim. I don't know how much it's going to be for everybody because there's a lot of people on Facebook, but you have to live in the United States. So it excludes everybody outside of the United States and you can opt out of it. Uh, if you don't, if you don't want it, um, but the form is um, here. And what I want to tell you guys about that form is there's one part where they're going to ask you for your username. Okay. And this is very careful. I, this information is very important. So listen carefully and write this down. Your username is not your login ID. So whatever name you're putting in, um, it could be if that's what you made your username. But nine times out of 10 is not your login ID. So it also is not the name on your profile. So if your name is Kimmy or Kimberly or whatever, that's not your user ID. You'll need to go into settings or into, under your privacy and settings, then go to settings, then go to privacy or user ID, and you'll see what your username is. You may not have a username. If you don't have a username, create your username, and then that's the username that you're going to put in the uh, in the form. But that's say really that again. Confusing. Say that again, Kim. Where did you go? You're going to go, in fact, um, let me do this really quick. I'm going to share my screen. This is going to this is be um, helpful. It's only, um, and I'm going to, um, so this is, this is also uploading. I don't know why this thing is slow today, but uh, let me go ahead and. 
Um, I don't know why it's not already on there. I'm, I'm in something else. Here we go. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Um, let me go ahead and pull this up for you. And it, it shows you what I just said, because if you're visual like me, all right. For more than 10 years, we have worked. Go here and here. Okay. Here we go. So right here so you want to make sure this video that you're at the right site or at the correct website i'm just going to scroll up if you are no longer on facebook but you did have a facebook account and here they're going to ask here you we for, go. ask you for at least one of the emails that was can everybody hear um, that affiliated yeah. with your okay. account they're going to ask for your phone number and this is where it gets tricky here they're going to ask you for your username now you may be inclined to type in your login id your login id is not your username i repeat your login id is not your user name so then the next question is well what is my username it must be my profile name your profile name is not your username again your profile name is not your username you may not even be aware that you have a username or you may not even have a username so what you need to do is to find out what your username is or if you have a username if you don't have a username go ahead and create a username and the way that you do this it is right here on the form you will navigate to on your Facebook page, you'll navigate to account, settings and privacy, then settings and under settings, you'll see username. If you have a username, it will be there. And that's what you're going to put here. If you don't have a username, then you have the uh, option of creating one at that time. If you are on your mobile phone or your mobile mobile device, then you should navigate to profile, edit profile, and then your profile link should have your username on it. And again, if it doesn't have a username that you recognize, then you probably don't have a username. So you'll need to go ahead. Okay, there you go. Does that help? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. That video is on yes. on the web. I mean, that video is um gotta go and stop it. That information is, um, that video is on the YouTube channel. So you can go and look at the, the, from start to finish as you're completing it. And the deadline for that is August 25th, 2023. So you want to make sure that you just get that done. It takes all of maybe three minutes, three to five minutes, depending on whether or not you have to look up your username. Okay. All right. So awesome. I think that is so great. Thank you so much for all of this. this oh my gosh. I wish I had more time. I have somebody. I told you this was the hardest one I have ever had to do because it's like, oh my gosh, everything that I'm talking about today could take a full hour, you know, or or be a full yeah. class. And that's why on the website, I'm gonna put that in the link too. I, we're still working on it. So if you if it's a little if there's still a couple of links that's not working and stuff like that yet, you know, don't worry about that. We're we're gonna tighten that up um really soon. Also, I hope I, I will be doing, you'll see little videos of me as the gig coach. I am doing personal coaching for folks who are gigging. So if you need me to do be your coach or to coach you through this process, which is getting you to the right app, getting you set up. Yes following you um, for a couple of days, I will do 10 sessions with you to make yeah. sure you are making the money that you need to make. Now it's not free because I don't have, I just don't. The time. Yes, but <laughs> it will be worth your while because I am worth it, let me tell you. So um, <laughs> I will email you guys, um, I will email all yes, you guys please. information on that and you could just go ahead and um and and grab me let me help you because i love it i love sharing this information and i love you guys for staying as long as you have any questions for me any more questions 
Nope, I'll just be waiting on that email or reaching out to you because I was definitely going to ask you, do you do trainings or, you know, one-on-ones rather? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Is you. there anybody else in here that's interested in a, a coaching um, or one-on-one? I am, Ms. Lewis. <laughs> this is your son. I wanted to ask a question about RAF. Uh-huh. Sonia, thank you, Yosef. I wanted to ask about RAF. Um, yep. Was it, is that the website, just RAF.com, to wrap your car? It's an app. I don't have my phone in front of me, but I can get that to you. Like I said, I'm going to go through this video and uh, take a look at all the different things that I talked about so that I can make sure you have it. I, I sent... If, if you registered, I did send you a gig guide that you can also get free on the website that's got, I think, something like 50 of them um, on there. But what I like to do, that's part of what the coaching will be. The first thing I'm going to do is sit down and see what are you interested in. And remember, you don't have to be interested in just one thing. You tell me all the things that you think you want to do. And then we will identify the websites, the apps everything that you need to go ahead and get started okay so um so like i said you you've got me um if you want to email me and you say well you know i'm i don't even i don't know that i need a coach but i do need some information and this is what i need uh email me let me know what you need and i'm thinking about like i said i might start doing a weekly um zoom just on um each week i will send out what the topic will be or what the what the gig will be the category will be and uh we'll get started okay so i thank you so much and if you're watching on facebook thank you guys for watching there uh and again it will be on youtube as well so i will send an email out and let everybody know that they can go to youtube and watch the video Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Ms. Lewis. This was great. Thank this you. Thank, Thank you. I'm you. telling you, it's exciting. It's just so much to be excited about. But man, this is going to change a lot of our lives because it definitely has changed mine. I mean, just being able to control pulling in that thousand or twelve hundred or fifteen hundred a week in my car. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. So, all right. Well, you guys take care and have the best day ever. And like I said, subscribe to the website so that you'll get notifications every time I put a new video up, okay? Thank I you. I love you all. And thank you guys for supporting me and being here we for 10 years. Too. I've been around here for 10 years. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you were talking about working at Congratulations home. Congratulations on 10 years. Popular. Thank you. You are spectacular. Ah, oh, thank you. I love you guys. Take care. Love you. Take care. Bye-bye.